it's a sample holder. Okay, so obviously for all of my work, we're looking at pressure of fluids. So you need to come up with a way to apply a pressure to a fluid. Now the problem is, I mean, this is um, a non-working version of the scanner which we use at Nottingham. Just open up the front. So you've got, you've not got... <laughs> What is that? That's a rat. We put it in, we have, um, when we have like UCAS tours and stuff, when you say it's a small animal scanner and then everyone's all really excited and then you open the door really slowly and they, they're expecting to see all of this clever fancy scientific stuff and there's a small animal in it and it really makes them jump, it's quite good fun. <laughs> cool. I'm just trying to finish a paper which we've been writing. Um, the submission to Journal of Magnetic Resonance. A robust spatially resolved pressure measurements using MRI with novel buoyant advection free preparations of stable microbubbles in polysaccharide gels. Does uh, right. go on. <laughs> what on earth does that mean? Um, it's basically uh, just summarising the last bit of work which we've done. Um, so the technique which we use uses these little microbubbles um, with MRI and it gives us contrast to pressure. Um, the problem is, is that because they're filled with gas, they rise straight to the surface of um, any liquid that you put them in. So recently what we have found out, well it's about a year ago now, um, is that there are a couple of fluids that are really thick um, that trap the liposomes but which don't hurt the sensitivity which you get with the MRI. Um, and so basically this is just a publication um, about that. Um, so to start off with, um, it was uh, me, my supervisor, and the guy who came up with the idea to use the gels. Then what you need to do is you need to prove that there's still enough water in there to actually have an MR signal, because it's water that you're measuring. So it's important that there's plenty of water and it's free to roam around where it wants. So to do that, we had to have a diffusion measurement. Um, and there was a guy in Germany uh, called Petrick who we met at a conference. Um, and so we went to make some measurements on his scanner. Um, because it's specially set up to make diffusion measurements. So then he was added. Then, <laughs> then you needed to prove that it was um, that he had, that he had got thick. So you want it to be thick to trap the bubbles, but you don't um, want to hurt the diffusion. So then uh, there's a, a guy um, here, uh, Dave Fairhurst, who's got um, an instrument for measuring the viscosity of stuff. Um, and we'd made some measurements, and then our interpretation of them was a bit loose. So we got him on board, and then he helped us to sort of draw some good science out of that. So then he was added, um, and then there's the, um, the two people that make the microbubbles for us. So they're on there, um, and then we struggled with a bit of the maths for it as well. So we got one more author in. The problem is, is everyone has to review the article, everyone has to be happy with it before you can send it off. Um, and obviously you need everybody to look at the bit of work which they're particularly involved with, but you need them to look at everything, the article as a whole. So once you've written the article, you then have to send it to them, they review it, they say, I don't like this, I don't like that. You sometimes have them conflicting and saying, particularly with the pictures, we've got a problem at the moment where some people like grids on the pictures, some people don't like grids on the, the figures. Um, and then you sort of have to sit down and decide what would be best for the paper. We're hopefully going to send it to the reviewers today. And then what happens? I hope. Um, then they look through it. So, well, first of all, it goes... Um, and they just see whether it's appropriate for the journal. So they have a quick read through, see does this match with what the journal normally publishes. If they're happy with it, it goes to two reviewers and they look through um, and then they make comments, changes, suggestions, are they happy with it, what you could do better. Then they send it back and then you're obliged to really make most of the corrections. Then you send it back to them. If you've not made most of the corrections, they get angry, send it back and tends to be the end of it. So that's when you have to really make it good. OK, so we put a few different samples in there. You can put, um, we did this one so you can fit four in and in the middle, which you probably won't be able to see, there's another one which is just filled with water. Yeah. So it's just like a control. So you, um, as the scanner warms up, it drifts a bit and your signal changes. So you can just divide through by that middle one and it, it just balances your signal out. And when you say the samples, what's going on in there? What are you actually putting in there? Okay, so um, the last experiment we did, we had um, two different concentrations of gel um, in two of the wells and in the other two was the same concentration of gels but with a different type of micro -oil. So they're, they're made in different ways and we were trying to see whether one was more stable than the other one.
They look something like this. Oh, is that micro That's the micro bubbles. Oh, hang on. So they're just like a foam. Remarkably, it's what cheap ice cream is made out of. So if you go and have Asda Smart Price ice cream, it will be these with some glycerol in. And so this is this is the rock core, um, which you probably won't be able to see. Yeah, yeah. It's just in, it's just it's inside right, yeah. in this little bit here. Yeah. Um, so that's sintered glass. So that's the beads. They just heat up and then cool down really quickly, mm. and it makes like a sandstone. Can you tell me what they're simulating? Um, so that's it is it's supposed to be like a sandstone. Real sandstones have all sorts of nasty bits of metal and iron and other things which upset the scanner in. Um, so to make sure we didn't have any of them, you, we just buy these cool. sintered cylinders. Cool. Um, and so then you have a little bit of bulk either side to make sure that you don't get nasty points of flow through it. And then we flow the liquid through, through the middle of the sample. Um, we had a confirmation come through uh, that we were going to go and present um, my work at the conference in Toronto, which is the um, ISMRM. It's a medical conference. Um, so we were a bit worried whether we'd be accepted as it's not really very medically applied. Um, we sort of worded the abstract and the work to really sort of emphasise that it could be used for medical applications. Um, and then the category which we're in um, is all electronic posters. So you get half an hour um, with a, like a rolling PowerPoint of up to 30 slides and you stand with and answer questions. Um, you had some troubles finding out about that. Though. Yeah, what it's happened? terrible. The joy of Outlook decided that the um, the acceptance of the abstract and confirmation that we were going to have an electronic poster went into the spam. It took me three weeks to find it, by which time we'd already seen it on the website anyway. And so that's in May, February, March. So we've got about two months really to pull some good work out to present.